Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, proving the Mordelvey theorem. Uh, last time we laid out a strategy. We are going to first prove what's called the weak Mordelvey theorem, and then we're going to prove that an abelian group. Uh, so wait, let me just say first. So the weak Mordelvey theorem says that over a number field, and if m is bigger or equal to two, and e an elliptic curve the quotient E mod M is finite. So that's um, that's necessary if E over, if, if, if the K rational points are finitely generated, then this is a necessary condition, but is not sufficient. You can find groups, abelian groups where such quotients are finite, but they are not finitely generated. Okay, so that's not enough to prove finite generation of E over K uh, but it's a step. Then what we're going to prove later, in addition to the weak Mordelvey theorem, what we're going to prove is that an abelian group that has a quotient that is finite together with a reasonable notion of a height function, which we will define um, and so on. But if you have a height function, then this abelian group has to be finitely generated. And that's um, um, that will prove the weak Mordovay theorem once we prove that we have a height also that satisfies those conditions and we will do that. All right. Last time we proved a, a preliminary lemma that said that if you have a finite Galois extension and uh, over that Galois extension E mod M is finite, then in the uh, lower field, in the base field, that quotient is also finite. So that allows for us to assume that the M torsion is contained in the points they find over K, because the extension, uh, when you adjoin the M torsion to a field K, uh, that extension is a Galois extension. Great. And then uh, we define a tool that we're going to use to prove the wigmore delphi theorem, which is the Coomer pairing. The Coomer pairing goes from points over K cross the absolute Galois group to M torsion, and for a pair of P and a Galois element, it's sent to Q sigma minus Q, where uh, Q is a pre-image, an mth pre-image of P, all right? So uh, we were trying to prove uh, certain properties of the Coomer pairing. So uh, we had to prove that, well, that K was well-defined. We did that last time. That K is bilinear. Uh, we did that last time, and now we are going to prove uh, what is the kernel on the left and what's the kernel on the right. Uh, this is going to show, this shows this non-degeneracy proves that uh, the uh, Coomer pairing induces a perfect bilinear pairing or like this. Uh, perfect in this sense means that uh, when you have a pairing from A cross B to C, Perfect means that the the maps that you get uh, from A into homomorphisms from B to C that sends A to the map that sends to phi A comma uh, something in B. So those are homes. So that these maps are injected. These both maps are injected. That makes that perfect. Uh, that pairing to be perfect. Okay. And then we'll we'll see a property of perfect pairings is that, uh, well, that, that then once you have a perfect pairing, A is finite, even only if B is finite. So we'll get there. Uh, let's prove the properties that we want uh, of the kernel. Okay, so this is the proof of part C, uh, the left kernel on the left of kappa, is M E K. That's what I want to prove. Uh, so let's start uh, first. Uh, so I'm going to prove that uh, M E K is in the kernel and that the kernel is contained in M E K. So uh, first, uh, let P be a point that is a multiple of M. Okay. Uh, then P can be written as M times Q with Q in uh, defined over K. Okay. And uh, 
Uh, therefore, I can pick for my definition of kappa uh, of the Kummer pairing, I can take that Q uh, that is defined over K, but because it is defined over K, uh, the Galois action for any sigma in the Galois, in the absolute Galois group, that is going to fix Q because it's in the base field, and therefore I get O. So the map is zero uh, for all sigma in the Galois group. Okay. Okay. And therefore, um, uh, therefore P is in the kernel, in the left kernel. Uh, so now uh, let's go the other direction. Uh, suppose that P is in the kernel, uh, which implies that kappa of P sigma is O for all sigma. And now uh, let uh, Q such that uh, M times Q is P. And uh, Q is sigma minus Q, then um, uh, Not too fast. So Q such that M times Q is P, uh, then this is Q sigma minus Q is always zero. Uh, so that implies that Q sigma is always Q for all sigmas in the Galois group. And again, by the Galois, the by Galois theory, now in the other direction, Galois theory, if something is fixed by every Galois element, then it's in the base field. And then Q is in uh, the base field. Uh, so I'm sorry, this is in the base field. So it is defined over K and therefore uh, P uh, belongs to M times EK because P is Q time, P is M times Q and Q is over K. Uh, so uh, we've proved both directions for the kernel on the left. All right. And now uh, for the kernel on the right, uh, the kernel on the right, we claim that it's L, which is the compositum of KQ for all uh, Q such that N times Q is an EK. Okay. Uh, the kernel on the right is not uh, L. The kernel on the right is actually uh, the Galois group of K bar over L, where L is defined as so. Right. So uh, let's let's prove again uh, both directions. So suppose that sigma fixes L. So it's in the Galois group of K bar over L. Uh, then kappa of P sigma will be uh, some Q sigma minus Q, but Q times uh, M times Q is P, which is defined over K, and therefore uh, Q is in L. So Q is defined um, and Q is defined uh, over L. Uh, therefore, sigma fixes this, so this has to be O for all P and EK. Okay, uh, and therefore, uh, sigma is in the kernel on the right, right. And then on the all flip side, now suppose that I have, um, something in the kernel, so a sigma that is in the kernel, uh, that by definition says that kappa P sigma is O uh, for all P over K, uh, but then uh, this is Q sigma minus Q with Q arbitrary such that M times Q is P, and uh, therefore, again, this is sort of like the same proof over and over again, but um, this says that Q sigma is Q uh, for all 
Q such that um, uh, M times Q is in EK really, because I can pick any P in EK and then take a pre-image Q. And then this thing that sigma is in the kernel is going to tell me that Q is fixed. Uh, and therefore, um, so Q is fixed and therefore uh, sigma fixes uh, KQ and therefore uh, sigma fixes the compositum of all such fields, which is L. Uh, and therefore sigma is in the Galois group of K bar over L. And that proves uh, the other direction. Okay. Great. Um, and then uh, what this says is that then um, um, because we know what the kernels are, then uh, let's just abuse notation and call it kappa again. Ek modulo its kernel on the left cross uh, the Galois uh, group, the absolute Galois group modulo its kernel on the right, the Galois group of k over l this is going to be perfect but let me just say that this by galois theory in this case infinite galois theory but by galois theory nonetheless uh, this is isomorphic to uh, the galois group of l over k okay because l um uh, yeah, so uh, in this case, L is an abelian, it's a, a Galois extension, so the K bar over L is a normal subgroup, and you get that isomorphism of Galois groups, okay? Uh, so this is perfect. So, for example, I can show you that the map, that the induced map uh, on the uh, on the left, so for example, phi that goes from ek mek to homs from the Galois group of L over k to em that sends any class here to um, the hom that is kappa. Because this is a bilinear map, if I fix up uh, one of the elements, then this gives me a linear map. So it gives me a home from the Galois group to EM. This is injective. Indeed, if this was, uh, if something was in the kernel, if kappa p dot was in the kernel, what that means is that it is the trivial homomorphism. So this is O uh, for all sigma, but we know that uh, P here, this is non-degenerate, so P would be in M E K, um, which is uh, in the in zero. Uh, so the non-degeneracy or uh, the fact that uh, we know what the kernel on the left is, would say that P is in M E K and therefore P is zero in, uh, in the quotient. So therefore uh, we get that uh, this is injective. Okay. And similarly, the other map is also injective, uh, so it is perfect. Perfect. Uh, but note that if um, phi from A cross B from a billion groups to an abelian group is perfect, then A is finite if and only if B is finite. Uh, because, uh, well, A going into Homs uh, from B 
into C um, and uh, B going into arms of A into C, these are actually injective. So this injecting here and this injecting here. And then you see that um, if, uh, if B was finite, then there's only finitely many, uh, uh, well, with C finite, Um, which it is in our case. Um, well, if B is finite and C is finite, then there's only finitely many homes that can go from B to C because you can just, well, whatever the generators of B are, there's finitely many of those, and there's only finitely many options where those can go. So this would be finite, and therefore A, which injects in there, would be finite, and vice versa. If A is finite and C is finite, this whole thing, homes from A to C are finite, and therefore BR is finite, okay? So what is our upshot here? So we have that kappa from EK modulo MEK cross the Galois of L over K going into EM is perfect. And therefore, um, the weak model V theorem is true. This is finite. If and only if the Galois group of L over K is finite, uh, but a Galois group is finite, it has the same degree as, uh, same order as the degree of the extension. If and only if, L over K is a finite extension. If and only if, uh, remember that L was um, K adjoined all the pre-images of points over K, if this is finite. Okay. So we've reduced the problem of proving the weak model Vey theorem to proving that some algebraic extension is finite. Um, but th this, at uh, first sight, this seems impossible that this would be finite. E over K may be infinite. And then I have to take nth pre-images. If E over K was finite, if I knew ahead of time that E over K, that the K rational point were finite, then there is m square pre images per point, and then I would have that definitely that is a finite extension. But e over k, the k rational points, we've proved already examples over q where this is an infinite set, and now I have to take m pre images of every uh, element. Um, so is this finite? It doesn't look it, except that we are going to use some uh, facts that we learned over local fields that. Uh, extensions, um, the extensions with M torsion, they actually had only uh, related to M torsion. We knew from the criterion of Neuronok Shefarevich, we knew that those are not ramified uh, except at a certain number of primes. And it turns out there's this deep theorem from algebraic number theory, which I'm actually going to sketch that says that extensions that are unramified outside uh, outside a finite number of places, um, then those are um, those are there's only so many ex such extensions. There's a, the maximal extension that is unramified outside uh, a number of of places is a finite extension. So we are going to use ramification here to to conclude our theorem. Right. So um, here is what we're going to prove. Proposition. Uh, let, as before, L be K adjoint the nth pre images of points over K. Okay. Uh, first, A, L over K uh, is an abelian extension. That's uh, key here. There's an abelian extension of exponent m. 
Um, so what that means is that the Galois group of L over K is a billion. And every element um, of, of uh, let's call this GL, of GL uh, has order dividing M. Or if you will, M kills these, um, this abelian group. Okay. Uh, remember here that um, the assumption that we're imposing here still is that the M torsion is contained is fully defined over K. Okay. Um, so we're going to prove that. Bayes doesn't say that the Galois group is a finite group. It's just saying that it's a billion. It may be an infinite abelian group. Uh, that is a billion and uh, it is of exponent M. That's all it's saying, but you can think, for example, Z infinitely many copies, a product of infinitely many copies of Z mod M, Z, that is a billion of exponent M. So it's still, it leaves the door open that this could be an infinite uh, extension. And B, let uh, a set S of uh, places. So it's going to be uh, the set of all. Remember our notation. These are um, uh, finite places, so places that are attached to prime ideals, such that E has a bad reduction at new union. Uh, infinite, uh, no, it's still finite places such that the valuation of M is non-zero. So uh, those are primes that are dividing M. Uh, union, the infinite places, okay? Notice that uh, there is only finitely many places of bad reduction, the place of bad reduction over K uh, divide the discriminant, so there's only finitely many of those. There's only finitely many places, so primes, primes uh, prime ideals that divide M. If you factor the, the ideal M times OK, there will be only finitely many primes dividing there. And there is only finitely many infinite places. Remember that the infinite places, there are R1 plus uh, R2 uh, the, in terms of the number of embeddings. So that's also finite. So S is a finite set of places. Then, L over K is unramified outside of S, i.e., uh, if new is a place and new is not in S, then um, L over K is unramified at new. Okay. So there is only, we're only allowing ramification at bad primes, at primes dividing M, and at the infinite primes. That's only allowing ramification in a finite number of places. And we will see that the maximal extension, that is a billion of exponent M, and and ramified outside a finite number of places that that is a finite extension of a number field uh, and therefore uh, we will be done with the weak model of a theorem all right let's prove uh this proposition i believe sorry, can we still, oh sorry can we stay here for just a moment um yeah can you remind us what do we mean when we say that um l over k is unramified at a place um, I, I remember those being that the like new term being a valuation. Um, is, is that just an interchangeable term for at at a place? Uh, yes. So here, because we have removed, so because S actually includes all the infinite places, being uh, unramified at a, at a place that is a finite place, it just means that it's ramified at a prime which this value, this, um, this place comes from a prime ideal. And we are just saying the extension is ramified or unramified at that prime. 
-hmm. okay. okay. So um, this valuation, uh, this place new actually comes from a prime. And I'm just saying that except for a finite number of primes, prime ideals, the prime ideals where there is bad reduction and the prime ideals that divide M, mm -hmm. there is no ramification. And what that means is that when I split my prime P, um, so remember that I have a, if I have an extension L over K and I have the ring of integers on the ring of integers, P, this is Galois, so uh, a prime P will be ramified if when I factor P in OL, I'm going to get a factorization into primes and uh, Galois uh, theory and algebraic number theory tells me that the factorization in the Galois extension is going to look like this mm -hmm. and unramified uh, means uh, that E is one. Mm -hmm. There's no powers of primes appear in the factorization above. Okay. And that was uh, when we we're talking about in, in the local fields, the unramified at the um, an unramified extension in a local field, there's only one prime above another prime. Mm -hmm. So this prime above will either be a prime power, it will be a power of the prime below, or just uh uh, another just prime, mm -hmm. uh, and and in ramified extensions, there is no power. There's just uh, the prime above is just uh, like the prime below. It just, it just appears to one one power. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate it. Yep. Um, so let me see if this worked. I think I was going to copy this and then paste it again. Yeah. I'm gonna put it up here. And maybe just a little bit smaller. Hopefully you can sort of still see it enough to remind yourself of what's going on. Flatten it and then prove it. Um, uh, the first part is the easy part. So here's the proof of this fact. Um, so first we need to prove that the Galois group of L over K is a um as a billion of exponent m but we have the kumer pairing through uh the kumer pairing which we know is perfect it tells me that then the galois group of l over k actually injects into what into the homs from ek modulo m e k to the m torsion okay but uh such that uh, sigma goes into kappa uh, dot sigma right uh, but but look at this this is a billion uh and this is a billion uh and they're both of exponent m so this is a billion And clearly of exponent M because, well, the image is in the M torsion. And if I multiply by M, uh, I'm going to kill the M torsion and I'm going to get zero. So this whole thing gets killed by M. So uh, this is a billion of exponent M. Uh, and that's it. That's the proof of our day. Simple, right? Once you have the, once you have the right tool, um, the job is easy. And the tool here is uh, the Kumer pairing. All right. Uh, now the second part is we don't we have the right tool, but still we're going to have to do a little bit of work. But I hope that at this point you've seen this sort of proof at least two, three, four times. So it's not going to feel too unnatural. Uh, what we're going to do to prove uh, the second part, we're going to prove that L over K is unramified outside S. We're just going to work at a uh, a prime at a time and uh and and do and uh, um how do you localize at the prime we're going to go into the local field so we are going to complete at that uh at that place create an extension of local fields and then check that it's unramified but we already saw what happens uh, with what primes ramify and what primes do not ramify 
when you have an extension of local fields. So that's going to help us here. So uh, let me get started. So let uh, new be a place uh, that is not in S. Okay, S includes the infinite prime, so this is a finite place. Okay, a finite place meaning it comes from a uh, from a prime ideal. So when I localize, I'm going to get a local field uh, like the ones we were working with in the previous chapter. Um, and then uh, let uh, Q in E K bar be such that M times Q is in E K, and let K prime be uh, K Q. Notice that um, L is the compositum of all such K primes. Okay, so it going to, it suffices to show that uh, K prime over K is unramified at new um, because L is the compositum of all such uh, extensions K prime. Okay, that's already a great step because we've reduced this from a possibly infinite extension to just one finite extension that we know and control a little bit. Great. So now I'm going to extend everything to K prime. So I'm going to um, pick a new prime to be a place in uh, a place of K prime above new. What that means is that new here again comes from a prime P from a prime ideal P. So factor P in the ring of integers of K prime and look at what primes appear in the factorization there. Uh, so pick one of those primes above it. Okay, that corresponds to a place new prime. Okay, and then uh, let little k, I'm going to complete. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me complete first. Let uh, k new, um, um, over k new be the uh, extension of local fields of completions at the respective primes and uh, let uh, little k new prime over little k of new uh, be the extension of residue fields. Again, if I mod my um, my ring of integers k by the prime ideal corresponding to new, I get a finite field. And if I mod out the ring of integers of k prime modulo the prime of of it, I get a prime ideal, and this gives uh, this gives me an extension of finite fields. Okay, and um, now since uh, E has good reduction at new, uh, why? Because I've removed the bad places are in S. So new is not in S, gives me good reduction. But remember that good reduction is stable to make it in orange. Remember, it's uh, what we call stable. Therefore, in the extension, I still have good reduction. Uh, then E has a good reduction at new prime. So E over K, and this is E over K prime, um, or if you want in the completion, uh, there is a still good reduction upstairs. Very good. Uh, and again, because we proved this, we proved that good reduction is stable under finite extensions. Uh, this is a finite extension, by the way. 
uh, while L over Q over K is potentially still infinite, but we've reduced the case to a finite extension. Great. So I have a, a extension K prime where I still do have a good reduction. So now uh, to check is this ramified, I need to check what happens with the action of inertia um, in, in this case. So uh, now let uh, inertia in the extension. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, the Galois group of k prime nu prime over k uh, blah, 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 over k over nu. Okay, uh, this is inertia uh, b uh, inertia for the extension of places and uh, and let sigma b in inertia and i'm hoping that uh, sigma acts trivially on uh, on k prime if it acts trivially then k prime uh, nu is actually inside the maximal unramified extension uh, and therefore it will be unramified at nu okay so uh, by the definition of inertia um, what we have is that sigma, when I send this automorphism to induced some automorphism over the residue field, it acts as the identity. Okay, acts as uh, the identity in the uh, automorphisms of uh, the residue field. Okay. Um, therefore, uh, what happens to Q uh, sigma minus Q? Okay, so here I'm going to uh, reduce this point. Okay, K, Q is now defined over K prime. I'm going to uh, act on it and subtract Q, but then also reduce that thing, and uh, and then this uh the action of inertia or the action of the galois group uh commutes with uh reduction and um and this action is trivial therefore is just q uh twiddle minus q, q twiddle and i get o twiddle okay so this point is actually reduces to the identity but this point is an M torsion point. M times uh, Q sigma minus Q multiplication by M is defined over K. So it commutes with uh, actions of Galois uh, with base field Q and, uh, and, and this is in fact uh, a point over K. So therefore, sigma must fix it, and if sigma fixes it, then I get uh, that this is just O. So what do we have? That Q sigma minus Q is an M torsion point. Okay, Q itself was not an M torsion point. Q was a point such that the M times Q was in K, but when you subtract a conjugate minus itself, that is an M torsion point. And here is the important part which we just proved above. Uh, Q sigma minus Q is in the uh, kernel of reduction. But what do you what do we know about the kernel of reduction? Um, what we know that what we know about reduction and M torsion, remember, is that there is an injection. But the map that goes from E k uh, new prime M torsion to E twiddle over uh, k 
K prime over the residue field is injective. Why? Uh, why is this injective? Um, because uh, we've also assumed that the characteristic is relatively prime to M by our choice of S. Because uh, the evaluation of M cannot be other than zero, otherwise uh, new would be in S. So this has to be zero uh, because uh, new itself was not in S. The evaluation, if it's non-zero for one is non-zero for the other. So what do we have? We have a point of M torsion that goes to zero, but if this is an injective map, that tells me that the kernel is trivial and therefore Q sigma minus Q must be O itself. Okay. Um, so this is for all sigmas in the inertia and therefore uh, Q sigma is Q for all sigma in the inertia. Uh, and therefore, um, what that says is that K prime, uh, new prime, um, is contained in K uh, new uh, or, or if, so what that says is that K new Q is contained in K new and ramified. So um, K new Q is um, and ramified at new. And if you translate that to global, that says that K prime, which was K Q over K is unramified at new and, um, and therefore uh, K prime over K is unramified outside of S, which is what I wanted to prove for part B. Okay, we've done this trick before that by knowing that the M torsion is injective, if I prove that something maps to zero, then it has to be zero to begin with. If it maps to zero under reduction, then it has to be zero to begin with. And I've used that to prove that um, Q itself is fixed by inertia and therefore the extension just adjoining this Q, I don't ramify at new. And therefore, I have um, that the extension is unramified and the global extension is unramified at that prime. Okay. All right. So um, let's take a, a mini break here. And then I believe uh, we will then do a, um, an algebraic number theory intermission to prove that extensions uh, that are ramified, that are a billion of exponent M and ramified at a finite number of places, uh, that, that, that extension is a finite extension.